Hello and welcome to this Filbert Flies review of Latin VFR's Madrid Barajas Airport and City add-on for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm starting with an approach to runway 16 right to give you a look at the surrounding area and an impression of the performance of this add-on on my system. You can find my system specs and current graphics settings in the video description down below. After landing, I'll show you around the airport in different weather and lighting conditions, we'll have a look at a few of the included city landmarks, and in a Filbert Flies first, I've put together a little photo montage to show you the difference between Latin VFR's Barajas and Asobo's handcrafted version from the Deluxe and Premium Deluxe editions of the Sim. I'll finish up by giving you my overall opinion on the add-on. For now though, I'll stop talking and let you watch the landing in peace. Welcome to Madrid Barajas, we're parked up at Terminal 2's gate T15 and we're going to start the tour of the airport by having a little look at the jetway connecting. So you'll see the jetway does stand off a little way from the aircraft, uh, which is a bit of a shame and you'll notice that my parking is not to blame. Um, but the jetway models are pretty good, they are of course custom modelled and you'll notice some transparent glass around the staircase here. The structure looks quite realistic, the textures are pretty good, although perhaps slightly too clean in my opinion. Moving on to the terminal building, you'll notice straight away that we don't have any transparent glass here, but as we'll see later on, there's a great deal of transparent glass on some of the other terminals. The window textures look passable, they're not the best, they're not the most realistic impression of a terminal interior, um, but they're not too bad. The textures on the outside are perhaps a little bit low resolution, um, not so much that you would notice from the cockpit of an aircraft, but when you get up close you will notice that they get a little bit blurry and there's a few little aliasing issues in between these slabs here. The main part of the building with these uh, slabs out the front looks very nice and they are pretty well weathered with bits of dirt here and there and also some nice cracks which really add to the realism. We've also got some nice little touches like these air conditioning units. There isn't a huge amount of detail included on the roof, which doesn't matter a great deal to me, um, and what is there has been modelled nicely. The roof textures are pretty crisp. Adjoining Terminal 2, we have Terminal 1 with its heavily tinted black glass frontage. You'll notice that the window panels here are each individually modelled and you can tell this by the way they reflect the light. It's a really very realistic representation. And as we move inside you'll notice that this is our first taste of the interior modelling at this airport. There isn't a great deal of detail here but we do have some passengers which is nice to see. Unfortunately the windows lose their tint completely from the inside but I know this is something that developers struggle to balance with the night lighting and various other things so I'm pretty impressed. As we move along Terminal 1 you'll notice that the transparent glass disappears or maybe you won't notice because the opaque window textures used here match very nicely so there's no obvious transition. 
There's some really nice exterior detailing around this part of the airport. I love the rust on this canopy here. And the building textures are really nicely weathered as well. This is Terminal 3 and once again we have some fantastic transparent glass and some really nice reflective tile work as well. As we move inside you'll notice that there's a little bit more detail on this terminal interior and it looks very very nice indeed. Terminal 4 looks absolutely fantastic. I really love the chips in the paintwork, the detail in the structure, the smoothness of its iconic roof. The whole thing looks incredibly realistic. Down at the bottom you'll notice that we even have a luggage area modelled with some transparent plastic curtains uh, at the entrances. Now this is a fantastic level of detail. And moving up again, you'll notice that we have the sunshades very nicely modelled and textured. And behind them we have yet more transparent glass and more interior modelling. And once again, I'm really, really impressed by the level of detail here. From a certain distance away, and unfortunately that distance is where you're going to be taxiing the aircraft, you do end up with a bit of flickering of these uh, sunshades. It's particularly noticeable here. And I did notice it earlier on when taxiing around the airport as well. So that's a little bit of a shame. Unfortunately, the same sort of flickering is also present at Terminal 4S. Now, I imagine this is something developers have very little control over. It's probably just to do with the distance between the horizontal slats on the sunshades. That said, in the Asobo handcrafted version in the Premium Deluxe Edition, I didn't have this flickering. It is quite distracting and uh, yeah, it, it's just unfortunate, I suppose. While we're here, we should probably take a look at the control tower, which is really quite impressive. It's been beautifully modelled, beautifully textured, nicely weathered, and there's even an animated lift going from the ground level up to the tower itself. This is the General Aviation Terminal and I have to say it's a little bit underwhelming. The texture works not bad, the model isn't bad, but it doesn't look anything at all like the real thing unfortunately. The same can be said of the cargo terminals. They look pretty reasonable, the textures are perhaps slightly less crisp than those on the passenger terminals, uh, but they look alright. Again though, they are not super accurate. You can have a look in uh, Google Maps in the satellite 3D view and you'll notice that the signage isn't quite right, the shapes aren't quite right. But you know, this isn't something you'd necessarily notice if you weren't looking for it. And Latin VFR have created a reasonably good impression of a cargo apron. I'm quite impressed by the amount of clutter around the cargo apron. It's perhaps not quite as busy as I would like, but we do have a variety of vehicles, dollies and other things which do bring it to life somewhat. The airport comes with quite a few static aircraft. There are none around the terminals taking up gates, but we do have a few business jets on this GA apron here. We have some airliners parked up on remote stands. And we have six British Airways A380s parked up on what I presume is a disused taxiway in the middle of the airport. This to me seems like quite a sensible approach to take to static aircraft. They bring some life to the airport, but they don't stop you parking exactly where you want to park. The ground textures at this airport are generally pretty good. They look realistic, they're well weathered with plenty of tyre marks and dirt around the place, and by and large the materials used match the real world airport pretty well. If you're obsessive about accuracy, you will find one or two areas for improvement. 
The colour of the concrete slabs directly in front of Terminal 4 is a little bit off, for example, and the taxiways don't have the attention to detail that some other developers give them. They're pretty uniform and you won't see the blemishes and repairs that are present at the real airport. But overall, they're crisp, they're close to being accurate, and they look good, which is the main thing. The ground markings look absolutely fantastic. They're all accurately placed, they're the right shade of yellow, they're nice and crisp, yet also well weathered. The grassy areas look pretty good. There are some areas where there is no grass and the default satellite imagery looks a little bit blurry, but there isn't much that developers can do about this as far as I'm aware. It's either accept what the sim generates or slap some slightly less realistic textures over the top. So yeah, I can't complain about that here at all. The 3D taxiway signs look great. They're crisp and clear. And as far as I can tell, they're custom models. I haven't seen them before, I don't think. So again, very impressive. The runways are a little bit of a disappointment in my opinion. You'll notice we've got some weird anomalies where different textures blend into one another. Also, the materials used and their colours don't match the real airport particularly closely at all. That said, the runway markings appear to be accurate. Much like with Latin VFR's Barcelona, the landside areas are a mixed bag. This is the exterior of Terminal 1, and you'll notice that we've got some very weird roadway shapes going on here. It sort of feels like you're on a racetrack. Um, there isn't a huge amount of detail, and the textures aren't anything to write home about. So this isn't really somewhere you'll probably spend a lot of time. The landside entrance to Terminal 4, on the other hand, looks really pretty good. We've got some nice elevated roadways, some street lamps, and of course this fantastic structure. And we even have a little bit of interior modelling. Overall, the night lighting at Barajas is pretty good. The apron lighting is fantastic everywhere. It looks very, very realistic. The building lighting is variable. So starting here at Terminal 2, for example, you'll notice that we've got these orange pools of light over the building, but the downlighters which create them aren't actually lit. So that looks a little bit unnatural to me. Similarly, on the main part of the terminal building, we've got two giant pools of light here, and here, which just don't have a light source at all. And that's, yeah, that jars a little bit, but it's not a big deal. Due to the heavy tint, Terminal 1 doesn't appear to have any light in it at all. It does, in fact, as you'll see as we move inside. And I know that tinted glass is very hard for developers to work with. But when you're pulling up at this terminal at night, it does look a lot darker than it should. A lot of the opaque window textures could do with a little bit of brightening up in my opinion. You'll notice that there is a slight orange glow coming from within these buildings, but, and this is just speculation because I haven't found any images to compare this with, I imagine that uh, this terminal is a lot brighter by night than it appears in the sim. Terminal 4, including 4S, looks rather more impressive. The lighting is very convincing and realistic looking, although sadly once again we don't have any light sources for these pools of light over the sunshades. We've got a slightly more realistic amount of light coming from the terminal interior here. It still looks perhaps slightly too dark, uh, but as I say, I think developers have limited options when it comes to tinted windows. The landside areas are quite nicely lit. It's good to see some custom hand-placed street lights which light up these elevated roadways. Unfortunately, it's completely dark under this canopy. But, you know, you're not going to spend a great deal of time looking around here at night, so fair enough. The runway and taxiway lighting looks pretty good. Here's Barakas in the rain, and the ground textures look very nice indeed when they're wet. 
I've moved the aircraft to a different stand just to show you that some of the jetways do connect to the aircraft perfectly. I haven't tested every jetway at the airport, but of all the ones I've tested, only that one we started off at failed to connect, so I think we were just unlucky. You'll notice that we do have the usual issue with transparent glass popping and not being shrouded in the mist as it should be, uh, but as I always say, this is not the developer's fault, it's something that a Sobo needs to work on. And here's Barajas in the snow, and overall I'm pretty impressed with what Latin VFR have done here. There's an uneven covering of snow, there are no sharp edges that I've found, the only slight disappointment is that the runways are not clear of snow, and I would have liked to have seen that. But uh, within the confines of what this simulator allows, I'm pretty impressed. Time now to have a look at some of the landmarks that Latin VFR have included across Madrid. These are the Paseo de la Castellana skyscrapers, which look very nice, nicely modelled, nicely textured. Here we have the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium. And here's the Royal Palace. There are many other landmarks included, so this is really just to give you a flavour. And from what I've seen, they look great both day and night. And now it's the moment you've all been waiting for, the inaugural Filbert Flies photo montage to compare the Asobo handcrafted Barajas with Latin VFRs. Obviously, Latin VFR scenery is better, but I'm going to leave it to you to decide how much better based on these pictures. So, what do I think of Latin VFR's Madrid Barajas and City add-on? Overall, I like it, but I don't love it. The airport is a solid and fairly realistic representation of the real thing. The modelling and texturing of the airport buildings are done to a pretty high standard, and the interior modelling and the glasswork is particularly impressive. I'm also impressed by the quality and accuracy of the ground markings, and, in some areas, the attention to detail is outstanding. The city landmarks are very nicely modelled and textured, and it's really nice to see them included in an airport at this price point. There are three things really that stop me loving this add-on. The inaccuracy and dodgy blending of some of the ground textures, particularly on the runways, the inaccuracy of the GA and cargo terminals, and the flickering of the sunshades around the Terminal 4 buildings. Should you buy it though? If you have the standard edition of MSFS, absolutely. It's a great upgrade to the default Autogen Airport, and at $17.99, I think it's pretty good value for money. If you have the Deluxe or Premium Deluxe Edition, and therefore already have a Sobo's rather good handcrafted Barajas, this is a harder question to answer. I'd say it depends on the type of flying you're going to be doing. If you'll be flying here often, I'd say it's probably worth it, particularly if you do a lot of VFR flying and will get to appreciate the city landmarks. If you're only likely to make the occasional trip to Madrid, or will mostly be flying IFR, then I'd say it probably isn't. That's just my opinion, however. Hopefully the little montage gave you enough of an impression of the differences to make an informed decision. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Do please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel if you found this review useful, and I hope to see you again soon here on Filbert Flies. Bye bye.